87 dead bodies in this block. The Piper Alpha platform in the North Sea was devastated by a series of explosions on the evening of July 6, 1988. Over the next few hours as the oil rig burned, most of the topside modules fell into the ocean. 167 men lost their lives and many more were hurt or scarred. An estimated 2 billion pounds or about 5 billion US dollars today and financial damages resulted from the world's worst offshore oil catastrophe which disrupted 10% of UK oil production. Where did we go wrong with Piper Alpha? What caused the terrible results? Well, let's talk about it all in today's video. Approximately 120 miles to the northeast of Aberdeen is where you'll find the Piper oil field in Scotland. It wasn't until January 1973 that it was discovered, making it one of the earliest deep water reservoirs in the northern North Sea to be developed. In December of 1976, less than four years after the discovery of the oil, production of oil began. This is a record that has only very seldom been surpassed. Oil was supplied through a subsea line that was 128 miles long and led to a refinery that was purpose-built on the island of Flada, which is located in the Orkneys. Piper Alpha turned out to be an extraordinarily prolific place, and when the operator, Occidental, asked for permission to boost rates, it was granted on the provision that the gas should also be exported rather than burned. Piper Alpha had been a tremendous success. In December of 1978, a gas treatment plant received some upgrades and the subsequent export of gas began. After the water and hydrogen sulfide were removed from the gas using molecular sieves, the gas was compressed and then it was cooled by expansion. The heavier components of the gas eventually condensed into a liquid, mostly propane, while the remaining gas, primarily methane, continued to be exported. The oil that was going to be shipped to Florida had the condensate that had been collected in a big vessel that was attached to two parallel condensate pumps. It should be pointed out that there were two different ways of operation. It should be pointed out that there were two different ways of operation. In phase one mode, any extra gas was burned off, and in phase two mode, gas was shipped out of the country. Piper was functioning in phase two mode until three days before the disaster when the molecular sieves were pulled out of service for normal maintenance. At that point, Piper switched to operating in the phase one mode. After that, the gas and condensate treatment facilities were redesigned so that Piper could begin operating in Phase 1 mode. Condensate was still extracted from the gas and put into the oil export line, but Piper flared any excess gas that was produced after meeting the requirements for fueling the turbo generators in the gas lift system. It was an accident. On July 6, 1988, at approximately 2145, the trip for condensate pump B occurred. In a short amount of time following that, the gas alarms went off, the first stage gas compressors failed, and the flare was noticed to be significantly bigger than it normally is. Piper Alpha was severely damaged by an explosion that occurred around 22 o'clock. After hearing a high-pitched screaming noise that lasted for an extended period, witnesses then heard an explosion's flash and whoomph. The men in the control room were knocked to the ground and tossed to the ground when they were knocked off their feet. The majority of the guys were off duty and staying in the housing block when they were forcibly removed from their chairs or beds and thrown to the ground. The original explosion that occurred in Module C, the gas compressor module, resulted in a rupture occurring in Module B, or the oil separation module, where a condensate line was teeing into the main oil line. As a massive fireball erupted into the night sky, witnesses stated that there was a second light and bang that followed it. 20 minutes later, at approximately 2220, a high-pressure gas line that was attached to the tartan platform, which was operated by Texaco, ruptured, discharging gas at an initial rate of approximately 3 tons per second. 50 minutes later, at approximately 2250, a gas line operated by total ruptured, resulting in the release of gas that was traveling through Piper Alpha from the Frigg field to the St. Fergus area through MCP-01. The explosion brought down a rapid rescue craft that had been launched from the reserve vessel Sandhaven. As a result of the explosion, two of the three-man crew were killed, along with the six persons they had just rescued from the water. 
After another 80 minutes at approximately 2320, the gas line that supplied Claymore, which is another platform operated by Occidental, burst. At this point, the structure of Piper Alpha had been severely compromised by the strong fires to the point where the top sides of the ship began to collapse. At least 81 men were taking refuge in the main accommodation module, which was a four-story building. Unfortunately, it capsized and fell into the water, and everyone who was inside perished. By the early morning of July 7, 1988, three quarters of the original topsides had been lost, along with major sections of the jacket, and lay in a tangled mess 140 meters below the surface of the water. The fires that were caused by the wells and the oil and gas lines, all of which ruptured, one after the other, had produced flames that had reached a height of around 200 meters and had a peak rate of energy consumption of approximately 100 gigawatts, which is three times the pace at which the United Kingdom consumes its complete amount of energy. It took more than three weeks to put all of the fires that sprang out. On March 28, 1989, the ruins of Piper Alpha were tipped over and dropped into the water below. Only 61 persons were able to make it through the night out of a total of 226 that were on board. Among the fatalities, 109 passed away as a result of smoke inhalation, 13 passed away as a result of drowning, and 11 passed away as a result of injuries including burns. There were four instances in which the reasons for death could not be determined and 30 bodies were never found. Lord Cullen was given the responsibility of leading a public inquiry into the incident exactly one week after it took place. The public inquiry was in session for a total of 180 days. On November 13, 1990, the report authored by Lord Cullen was made public. During the investigation, the committee heard testimony from a vast number of witnesses, including the majority of the survivors as well as various experts. Finding out what led to the catastrophe wasn't a simple task at all. There was very little tangible proof left, and none of Piper Alpha senior management team members were able to escape. There were a lot of different hypotheses put up. Only a small number of the possibilities could be ruled out with absolute certainty, but the majority of them were exceedingly implausible. They all hinged on the simultaneous occurrence of a series of unusual occurrences for which there was no proof whatsoever. The investigation concluded that the most likely cause of the first explosion was the release of as little as 30 kilograms of condensate, mainly propane, over 30 seconds through an unsecured blind flange in Module C. At the time of the explosion, a pressure safety relief valve had been removed from the standby condensate pump as a part of maintenance procedures. Condensate pump A was disconnected on the evening of July 6, 1988 so that maintenance could be performed on the motor drive coupling. Pump A's pressure relief valve had also been removed for repair by a separate permit, and a blind flange was likely installed in its stead. However, neither leak testing nor pressure testing were performed on the flange. Around 2145, Pump B experienced a trip, and the operators made several fruitless attempts to restart it. The operators would have been aware that Pump A had been taken out of service for repair. Nevertheless, given that the maintenance had not yet begun and that the issue with Pump A was not very severe, it would not have been unreasonable for them to have considered resuming operation of Pump A. It's highly unlikely that the operators of Piper Alpha would have been aware that the pressure release valve for Pompeii was missing due to how work permits were managed on the ship. It is thought that the operators made actions to re-establish Pompeii and that during the process, condensate escaped from the blind flange that had been put instead of the pressure relief valve, but which had not been entirely screwed up. The flammable condensate managed to escape. The initial explosion was shortly followed by the rupture and subsequent fire of an oil pipe. After that, a rapid escalation of the calamity was brought about by the sequential breakdown of the gas lines. Hey, that's going to do it for today's video, but we'll be right back with more soon. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and leave us your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.